begin the look of the past with a very short essay about Margaret Thatcher's handbag. And Margaret Thatcher's handbag is in this box. Now, I've seen Margaret Thatcher's handbag. Obviously, it's one of many handbags. I've seen this handbag many times. Each time I've seen it, it's been displayed in a slightly different way. And I think this is tremendously important for what we're trying to achieve in the book, which is to get people to think really hard about forms of display and about audiences. Because displays imply audiences and audiences imply displays. So the history of the handbag which starts off with a then archivist in this wonderful archive saying, we don't want any handbags. Handbags have nothing to do with archives. To the situation that we have now, where visitors are dying to see the handbag. So I'm going to take the lid off and let's see what's inside. Very gently, and I think a flap is going to come forward there we go and here we are so here is Margaret Thatcher's handbag or as I want to keep insisting one of her handbags now the first time I saw this I was told very firmly you cannot touch this object but I was told just as firmly you may smell it and when the conservator opened the handbag, it had a very strong aroma of Margaret Thatcher's perfume. Now, the other thing that's very striking about this handbag is its size. So Thatcher is on record as saying a number of things about handbags. One of them is that uh, nothing could get lost from her handbag. So what she tended to do was to keep things that were most private or most secret in her handbag. The other thing we know is that she had her speeches on a piece of paper that was designed to fit into her handbag. Now, you might say, mm, so what? I think the point about this is that Handbags are quintessentially feminine. There are some men who wear handbags, but I think that doesn't alter the main point about femininity and handbags. And that handbag became a verb during Margaret Thatcher's time as Prime Minister. And it became a verb that was pejoratively associated with female power. So we know that handbags became an important way for people to come to terms with the extraordinary power that Thatcher had. Extraordinary for a woman, completely unextraordinary for a man. Now, you will see here that there is a note from Thatcher about her attitudes to the handbag or her, her feelings about the handbag. This was not there when I first came to see the handbag. So this is a wholly new mode of display. I'm a little sceptical about her retrospective comments about the handbag. She says she used it every day. Uh, frankly, I very much doubt this. I think we know that Hatch Thatcher had many handbags. The archive was initially offered quite a few handbags. She was very attentive to what she wore. She had someone who helped her choose her wardrobe. Um, there's a wardrobe diary in the archive. Uh, it's not yet um, in the public domain. I think it's extremely unlikely that Thatcher would always have used uh, the same handbag. The importance of going on about this is not just that, of course, handbags, clothing and so on are incredibly important parts of understanding people and societies. The point about it is that from the very beginning of her political career, Thatcher had to navigate what I think I want in the end to call a kind of misogyny about women having political power. 
or a misogyny that was elicited, particularly when she became leader of the Conservative Party. Now, this is not a word to be used lightly. And perhaps we should say that Thatcher's femininity caused anxiety. And that this anxiety was met in a, in a number of ways, often with quite negative comments about what she wore or how she had her hair done. And I think to understand contemporary politics, we have to understand these kinds of phenomena. And I think if we're interested in gender, we certainly have to take these phenomena very seriously. This box is not the first box in which uh, the handbag was displayed. And it has a feature which to me is tremendously intriguing. And this is the drawer you see here. I've never seen uh, the box, this version of the box before. So I suggest that we open the drawer and uh, see what's inside. And here we go. Right, in this drawer, we've got a range of objects from Thatcher's collections that are mostly quintessentially feminine. So we have the makeup bag, the lipstick, what looks like eyebrow pencils, a compact, the kinds of handkerchiefs uh, that women of her generation um, would have been encouraged to carry with them, and a lovely and I suspect very expensive pen with her name engraved on it. I think this illustrates wonderfully the capacity of archives to hold material objects that are, that are of enormous historical interest. So when we're looking at this handkerchief, it's not really the handkerchief itself. It's who it was owned by, how it fits into a life, how that life fitted into a nation, and how that nation fitted into world politics through this particular individual. It's about understanding the texture of lives and how lives are lived in, through and with objects.